The other type of setup we shall look at is the BIOS, or Basic Input Output System, which has more or less been the same for many, many years. There has been some different versions of it, but possibly the best known is the AMI BIOS. Unlike the UEFI, it tends to be text-based. However, like the UEFI, it provides a utility to program the CMOS with different options. In this first part, we have restarted the computer and entered the BIOS using the DEL key. In most cases, the DELETE key will also work. If you're in any doubt in which key to press, disconnect the keyboard and in most cases, an error message will appear at the startup similar to press a key to continue or DEL to enter setup. Or instead of DEL, it may be one of the function keys. You will need to use the directional keys to manipulate through the menus. In this version of the BIOS, the security options can be found through the boot menu using the right directional keys as we can see here. To select the security options, you will need to use the down directional key and press enter. So here we have the security options, very similar to our last example, but there are some noticeable differences. First we shall select the supervisory password by pressing enter since it is highlighted and we shall be prompted to enter a password. Just to keep things simple we shall choose the numbers 1234. Once again it can be up to 16 characters long. You will then be prompted to confirm the password. Notice that the supervisory password is now set. By pressing the F10 key then enter since yes is highlighted and the password will be saved and we shall exit. This seems to not have had any effect on the system. Let's restart and enter the BIOS. Now we are prompted for a password. So when the supervisory password is set, it only restricts the user from entering the BIOS. The other difference here is that we can make numerous attempts and the system will not lock us out. But neither will it allow the user access to the BIOS without the correct password. Now let's see what the difference is when entering the user password. So this is selected and we enter a password of 5678 and confirm it. Then press the F10 key to save and exit. Once again, Windows starts, so we still can access the operating system. Let's restart it once more, type in the supervisory password and enter the BIOS. After entering the supervisory password, select security options again. Notice the last options, password check. Using the down directional key we can select this and press enter. Setup refers to the BIOS and system to the operating system. This does not mean that the user can gain access to the BIOS unless they have the supervisory password. Using the down directional key we can select the system option, then press enter. We can see this has now changed. F10 to save and exit. Now the user will be prompted for a password to continue and once again without it it will refuse to go any further. To continue, we enter the user password of 5678 and the system will boot into Windows. To access the BIOS, the user password of 5678 will need entering first, then the supervisory password of 1234 will have to be entered. To remove the password, select the password options again. Press enter when the supervisory password is highlighted, leaving it blank, 
Notice how both the supervisory and user password options are now cleared. Press F10 to save and exit. Just a little bit more about the battery that powers the CMOS. The most common battery found is called the CR2032, which is rated at 3 volts and is made from various types of material, but the main part that generates the voltage is lithium, hence the name lithium battery. The size is about 19mm by 3.1mm and can be found in many devices such as watches to key fobs. As with all batteries, there is a positive and negative, and we should observe how these are inserted into these devices. On the motherboard, they are fixed in, generally speaking, with the positive side up, and last for about 4-5 to five years. The fixing holder do vary. Some are on a fly lead and plugged into the motherboard. These are simply unplugged, and the replacement is plugged back in. Others are held in a holder that has a spring arm that covers it, and holds it into place. With these the battery will need sliding out carefully since if the spring breaks then you will have no option but to replace the whole holder which can be very time consuming. The replacement battery just slides back in underneath the arm. The most popular way is shown here in this practical example. Here we can see a lithium battery. Before removing it check which side of the battery is facing upwards. As we have already pointed out, in almost all cases it will be the positive side. By squeezing in the clip at the side of the battery will cause it to pop out. To replace it, simply slide the battery in at an angle and press into position. We can also use this technique to discharge the CMOS. Remember the CMOS is only temporary memory. So we'll remove the battery, then the time, date, boot up sequence and passwords would be removed, and so the CMOS will have to be reprogrammed. Finally, on some motherboards, there are only two pins to discharge the CMOS, so the normal setting would be open as shown here, and closed to discharge the CMOS. We could close the setting using a spare jumper, or if one is not at hand, you can short the two pins together using a suitable metal object such as the end of a screwdriver. If we find that the CMOS requires reprogramming on a regular basis or the date reverts back to the date of manufacture, then this is a good indication of a discharged or faulty battery.